In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So this time of the year, as Father Joe mentioned, there are a lot of things that weave in and out of our celebrations. And it always amazes me when I'm preparing what I want to say on Sunday, how so many of the things, even though we're moved in a number of different directions, they all sort of converge. And we have to keep this in mind as we look at the, the combination of the feasts that we celebrate and the readings that we hear. Yesterday, in the Orthodox Church, we celebrated the Feast of the Protection of the Mother of God. And that's the icon that you see in the center of the church today. And it's a unique icon because it's the only icon of Mary that we have where she is not holding Christ. It's the icon where she has her arms outstretched and her her veil is woven in between her outstretched arms, symbolizing that she prays for all of us and that we have but to ask her in our prayers to intercede for us with her son and our God. And so the protection of the Theotokos is her entreaty on our behalf to Christ. And through those prayers, we all, we, we and she pray that our souls may be saved. Now this morning's gospel gives us some additional information about how that salvation is brought about. And Christ this morning, as he does a number of times in the gospels, tells us as you would have others do to you, so you must do to them. This, of course, is one of the renditions of the so-called golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But Christ goes a little further, almost understanding that we kind of wonder, okay, that's really a statement that's present in the old law. Love God above all others and your neighbor as yourself. This is straight out of Deuteronomy. But this morning, Christ goes even further in telling us what his followers need to do. He says, be kind to your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. This is, again, very different from what a lot of people think. A lot of us say, okay, I can, I can be good to those around me, but what we, what we really do, how do we really put that into practice? Are we just doing good to those who do good to us? And Christ tells everyone that if we just do good to those who do good to us, what credit is that to you? Even sinners are good to the people who do good to them. And if you lend only to those from whom you can hope to get it back again, and often even with interest so that you're getting even more than you put into it, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same thing. And so at the center of this morning's gospel lesson, we hear that when we lend, when we give of ourselves, we should do it not expecting something in return. And the Greek in that phrase in Luke's Gospel is unique. One thing that we have at our disposal that a lot of early Christians didn't 
we have a lot of research in scripture at our disposal and that phrase in the way it's rendered in Greek in, in Luke 6.35 is the only place in scripture that the phrase occurs. And we hear it in English as give or lend, not expecting anything in return. But the Greek is a little stronger than that. It says having no hope of getting it back again. And what this symbolizes to us, what this says to us, is that the return that we so often expect from one another, I give to you so that you'll give to me, that is bankrupt as far as the Christian faith is. Because the only reward you should expect is the reward that comes from the mercy of God who gives to those who are kind and those who are unkind. We need to show our love for all that we meet, not expecting a return from men. We know that Christ, who calls us back to the faith, that he will provide us with the only reward worth having. The mechanism for that reward comes to us in the conclusion of this morning's gospel, where Christ says, begin with mercy. In our English translation that we just heard, it says, be merciful for your heavenly Father is merciful. But the Greek says, begin with mercy. And the verb for begin is the same verb as the verb to be born. Be born anew. Be born anew in mercy. For your heavenly Father is merciful. We are called to restore in a rebirth within ourselves of the mercy that was ours in the beginning. We are created in the image and likeness of God. And the God in whose image we are born is a merciful God. And so when we take that mercy and give it to others. We are reborn. The image of God, broken at the time of Adam, is restored in us. And we receive our reward, which is promised to us by God, for all those who hear his word and keep it. This is our hope. This is our prayer. Most Holy Theotokos, as you hear our petitions for your protection of prayer for all your people, pray to your Son and our God that by our restoring to life mercy in the world, we may come to his everlasting life now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to